Hello, this is Mary Prasad. You can find me at awashwithcolor.com. Today I'm going to show you how I am using my hybrid sable hair water brush that I put together. Now you can find all this information on my blog, awashwithcolor.com, and I'll put the link in the description below. It has all the pieces and the instructions and a video from the person who I got the idea from, another YouTuber. All that information, just click the link below. My version of the water brush is slightly modified from the original. I'm using the Kuretake Sable Hair Brush Pen Replacement, the Luxury Brands Platinum Fountain Pen Converter, and the Niji Water Brush Mini, so I could use this one for travel. Here is a photo of all the pieces laid out just before I put it together. And this is a photo of all the pieces I had left over after I put it together. And here's just a final look at the pen. For the rest of this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how the brush works, first with some brush lettering, then some water coloring of a stamp for a card I made a few months ago when I had originally planned to do this post. For the brush lettering, I'm going to use my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors. I made this cute little palette a little while ago. I'm planning to do a travel water palette series, and actually just a water palette series because you can use them anywhere. Some of them are small, some of them are big, but I'm going to be doing that hopefully soon. Just like a water brush, you just squeeze the side a little bit to get some more water out. And I'm just trying to get a little, enough of the paint on here so that I can get some good saturation. The brush itself has a really nice fine point and the flex is great. It holds quite a bit of water. I'm very impressed by how well this works. I will say that the paint itself was giving me more problems than the brush. Uh, this is a Cotman. It's a student grade watercolor. It doesn't work the best. It doesn't glaze the best, but uh, I kind of struggled a little bit with it. In the end, I think it turned out okay though. Now I'm just going to speed things up here. I've been practicing calligraphy for maybe about two years, but I'm still not very good at the brush lettering part of it. It's, it's a little more difficult to handle the brush and the flex. For me, pointed pen is easier because there's not quite as much flex and you don't have to have quite as much control. So here I'm trying to blend the colors together and every time I did the water kept pushing the paint away and that's what I meant about the not glazing very well. I kind of fiddled with it back and forth and I got a sort of smooth transition but it's nowhere near as good as it would have been if I had used like professional watercolors. The paper may have had something to do with it as well. I just grabbed a scrap so I'm not even sure what kind it is. Here's just a close-up look of the lettering that I did. A little streaky, but it looks okay. And here's a quick look at the watercolor palette again. For the stamp coloring demo, I'm going to use some of the Primo watercolors. This is the Decadent Pies tin. I actually took all of my Primo watercolors out of these tins and put them into what was originally a gift certificate tin. And they fit in there really well. It's a lot more compact and I'm quite happy with it. Amazingly, this holds four of those Prima watercolor sets. That's 48 colors. And I just did a quick swatch sheet that I put in the lid. It's a mixing area when I'm traveling, but for now I'm just going to use this flower one. Since I didn't really give you a good look at the tip without the cap, here is a close up. And right about here is where I remembered that the watercolors usually work better when they're a little bit moist. So I grabbed my spray bottle with water and gave them a quick spritz. You will also need a paper towel to clean off the tip of the brush. And it's good to have a separate sheet of watercolor paper, same type that you're using to test the colors. I wanted the bears to look a little different from each other, so I wanted to mix up a variety of browns that sort of look bear-like. The video is quite long, so I'm going to speed it up quite a bit now. In a moment, I'm going to zoom in so you can see things a little bit better. And since the coloring is a couple minutes long, I'm going to put on some music for you.
So here's a close-up look at the image, all colored. Sorry about the weird transition in there. Don't know what happened. <laughs> and finally, a look at the water brush. I recently took this on a trip with me, and I have to say I am still very pleased with it. This has turned out better than I expected. Last but not least is a final picture of my completed card. I hope you like it, and I hope you like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for stopping by.